are getting our conversation started uh, talking about the coronavirus, I should say the new strain of coronavirus. And here to give us all the details as to what's happening globally as well as how we're preparing locally is Director of Health Services, Dr. Marvin Manzanero. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that we seem to come around topics of um, <laughs> global and then regional national concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's being described as a global scare, and I think it, it's very fitting. You know, across the world, people are extremely concerned um, because it is a new virus. People are dying from it, um, and it seems there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what is known about this new strain of coronavirus. So can we do just a bit of um, uh, general information about the virus itself? How long it's been discovered? What's unique about it? And, and why it, it creates such a bit of a panic? Well, I think whenever it's a novel or a new situation is when there's panic. And that's usually because of levels of uncertainty. There's still many unknowns in, in, in this regard. Um, coronaviruses have been around circulating in human species at least for 15, 16 years in terms of their ability to produce illnesses or diseases. Um, SARS is one that uh, had a much higher mortality rate, it seems, than this one. And even uh, that has to be measured because we are not so sure what the level of mortality this virus is going to have. It doesn't seem to be um, having a high mortality rate for now, but the, again, there's many yeah. unknowns in that regard. Um, there's a, also MERS, the Middle East uh, Middle Respiratory Eastern. Syndrome. Um, that's caused by a coronavirus. Um, so this is one virus that has different types. The, SARS was a new one. Yeah, MERS was a new one. Six, seven, six previously known species of coronavirus. This is the seventh to, know, to be known to cause disease in humans. Okay. Yeah. So um, and it's usually going to be linked when there's a they break off from the animal species and jump to the human species. Mm -hmm. In animal species, they might, animals may have been exposed for a longer period, they develop immunity, they may or not develop disease. Mm -hmm. When there's a jump to the human species, that's when you usually will start having diseases in humans. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what usually has happened, especially with coronaviruses. Uh, for example, SARS was initially traced back to bats, Pass on to a cat and the cat pa passes yeah. on to humans. Some sea animals like whales will have coronaviruses and don't have any disease. Morse came from camel, jumped to the human species. Um, and this one, there's not the clear link. The, the virus that is most similar to, the, to, to this one that that's, is, was found in bats, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bat that transmitted it onto humans. It could have passed it on to another animal species and then on to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and every day we come across new information because even though it was linked specifically this outbreak initially to the market a market yeah. um, that sells live animals now we know that the first clinical case seems to have actually been from the first of December mm -hmm. so that would not link it to that market um, so there's still a lot of investigation that is taking place. Yeah, yeah because uh, and so there's lots of unknowns in that regard. Yeah. We had been aware of something going on through the international regulations, which is a network of, of health officials across the country that flags any anomaly that might be popping up. Yeah. So we, it wasn't known what was causing it. There was reports by pediatricians um, that there was something coming along. They weren't sure what was going on, so to be on the alert. Um, and then, of course, more data started yeah. and more data mm -hmm. continues to arise every day. Now, the concern with a new virus, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, would be that we don't know how to treat it yet. Is that the case? Well, in this case, there is no specific, well, viruses, there is no real specific treatment. Mm -hmm. I think the unknown is because you don't know how it's going to behave. You don't mm -hmm. know what level of transmission it's going to have. You don't know levels of mutation because viruses mutate mm -hmm. every every day. Um, initially, with this one, there wasn't so sh we weren't sure whether there was a human to human transmission. Now there seems to be a pattern coming out, where the re it's said now that every person that's positive will be trans transmitting the virus between 1.4 to 2.5 persons. Yeah. So once it's above one, 
that means that it's it's going to propagate. If it's under one, then they, 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 is that a that's highly usually. transmittable rate, or is well, uh, all that means is that once it's above one, it's going to propagate itself onwards. Mm -hmm. If it's less than one, then that means one person is passing it to practically nobody else. Mm -hmm. So again, this is initial investigations that are. But if we could just link it to something like, let's say, the common flu, is is that the same? Less? Um, it probably is going to be the same for now. Okay. Um, the other trick situation with this particular one, which is different from SARS and Ebola, for example, which is another, is that SARS and Ebola were transmitted once the patient had symptoms. Mm. In this particular case, there seems to be what we call asymptomatic carriers, which means people are not going to develop they don't signs feel and sick. symptoms. They won't, and they mm -hmm. just pass it on. And that also means that not everybody who is getting the virus is getting sick, no, but not everybody's going to be severely ill. That percentage seems to be about one in five persons that will be mm. severely mm -hmm. ill. And that is a concerning issue. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the yeah. everybody's chief concern is that if they do, if it does spread or if it does, what are the chances of me getting severely ill, possibly dying because of people who have already, you know, because of the mortality rate that's already sort of becoming established with the virus already. Yeah, um, and even mortality rate is a, is a trick situation right now because we know of at least 170 mm -hmm. people that have died, all of them in, in, in China, mind you. But the problem is we don't know the denominator. We, we don't know how many people have been ill. But if you do basic math, which is not really recommended in the initial stages of, of the mortality rate doesn't seem to be as high as with SARS. Mm -hmm. Well, right. the latest numbers are 7,700 cases. Yeah, it's about 2% mortality rate. And doing 170 strict deaths. Doing math. And 17 countries have confirmed cases, but outside of China, there are only 68 cases. Yeah, no deaths. And in, no deaths. In that, in that, um, so what does this mean? Well, again, because you don't know the denominator, but yeah. we, we know you talked about drawing a parallel. Perhaps we can draw a parallel also with other influenza viruses. Okay. In the flu season that's going on in the region, yeah, the, the common flu. Mm -hmm. that, you, that can evolve to a progressive and, and, and harsher case of pneumonia, complicated pneumonia. Um, we have a, around a 4% mortality rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know we are s concerned, scared, if you will, about the coronavirus, but we really can't take all the light off the influenza season that we have because our influenza season has had people it does Dying. kill people, yeah. I know of two Belizeans this year alone that traveled outside of Belize for business, for whatever, and died in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the virus that they took was from here. They developed progressive respiratory disease and died mm -hmm. in, in, in the U.S. Um, so, it, I mean, our flu viruses can kill us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's... I've heard this message coming out from the Ministry of Health, and, and you're right, when we spoke of common causes of death, um, it, it's surprising to think that in the top 10, the flu is one of our top killers, over 100, um, at least in 2018. I'd imagine 2019 was similar. So we know what, what that does is also add a scare that if there is coronavirus in Belize, we already don't take care of the flu because we're dying from it yeah. every year. So what's going to happen in a case of a new form of flu that people don't know how to treat and no. we don't know much about yet. We, we do swabbing as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so because we, are, we need to know what we have. Because whatever data we have is fed into a global flu bank of, of, of information because that determines what kind of vaccine is going to be, be produced, which is why the flu vaccine changes every year. It depends on the dynamics. The lab data I got a couple of days ago suggests that we have identified in, in our cohort 119 different viruses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had mentioned six strains of coronavirus. We have two in Belize, not the new one, okay. but we have coronaviruses yeah. circulating in Belize that have been identified in Belize. Um, so it's not, I mean, with viruses, it's a situation of when it's going to come. You talk about being scared. We are preparing globally mm -hmm. for a new pandemic is just when it's going to come around. I mean, there's even an influenza global strategic plan 2019-2030 in preparation for 
it's not, it's just a question of when, it's not if. I, even with this new coronavirus, it's eventually going to make itself a, across the world. It's just when, that, that, mm -hmm. that's a key concern, I guess. Okay, that was a bit of a scary uh, mm -hmm. thought there in terms, because our idea of pandemic is something that, that you know, spreads rapidly across the globe and, and kills a lot of people. Um, but when you talk about new diseases, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of other issues. We, we had the Zika scare, we had the chikungunya scare, we had the Ebola scare, we had the SARS scare, H1N1 scare, swine flu scare. Um, you know, when you look at all of, of those issues and, and how Belize had to get into protective mode, protective mode um, what are some of the lessons that we have learned locally to try to deflect um, and prevent having anyone come into the country and spreading this disease? Um, you know, interestingly, we have H1N1 circulating now, as well now. Yeah. Um, but we didn't but, get but it when it was the no, outbreak. No, but that year, when, when the outbreak was on, we had people die, and not of H1N1, of the other influenza viruses as mm -hmm. well. So, I mean, we, we can't shy away from that. Um, you know, it, it's classic public health measures. That's what you need to be able to establish. I, I know that one of the key things that people keep particularly seeing on social media is okay, travel bans, mm -hmm. um, you know, but that's not routinely recommended. I mean, classic public health measures are what you need to be able to establish, which means in, in the case of Belize, what do you do is, okay, you need to be able to establish links. Mm -hmm. How is your link going to get here yeah. quicker is, okay, flights originating out of China, US via Panama, via El Salvador are coming here. Yeah. Um, we know that people leaving China are being screened. Mm -hmm. So that's a first layer of protection. Mm -hmm. right? People arriving in the US are being screened. Mm -hmm. That's a second layer, if you will, of, in terms of uh, scrutiny that's being taken. Um, what in our meeting with airport officials, what we have asked is that we would want a manifest of all the passengers arriving, prior to them arriving, which mm -hmm. means we should be able to know where they're originating. Um, and then have a direct contact with anybody coming out of China, where they have been, if they have been in close contact with anybody they know that was sick or. Mm -hmm. If patients are asymptomatic, if people are asymptomatic, you really can't quarantine people just because they are coming out of China. You, you need to be able to have a contact in terms of, okay, when, at any point in time when you're ill, this is what the measures are going to be able to take, um, which is what everybody else is doing. Because again, you may have people who will never develop signs and symptoms, so. If you just quarantine them, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. But, but there are cases but that we have been flagged. Risk? But isn't there a risk? Just I mean, I'm going to stick a pin there. If we're saying that it may be, because we're only learning as we go along, transmitted uh, when someone doesn't feel sick. If you have a manifest that says someone was in Beijing a week ago, um, and they came into Belize, they passed through the screening in China, they passed through the screening in the US, um, in Belize, we would still allow that person to oh, oh, leave what? the airport and, and interact with whatever business they came Well, actually, for. we know two students that were coming, that are Belizean students that are in China and are being sent back because mm -hmm. of their measures in terms of sending out international students. I mean, everybody acro across the world, these students are going to be sent. Um, so we are going to be aware of when they arrive and they are going to what a self-quarantine, self-isolation. Okay. Right? It means they are, they are come to the airport. To yeah, that's part of the condition. So we know how that travel situation is going to come about. Um, we have had people who are in China, we are aware of that, who have arrived in country before the actual outbreak has happened, two, three weeks ago, have remained asymptomatic. Or if they develop any disease now, it's not going to be related to that. It's related to mm -hmm. whatever we have here. So I said, this becomes kind of detective work as well, which is why you're saying, you know, so it, things change as you go along. It's, I think, trying to be alert with what is changing with the virus, the dynamics of how it spreads, and then trickling it back to the work we do here. And um, in terms of managing the disease, and I suppose even like prevention, um, because it's uh, it, it's an important conversation because not only this new virus you were talk we were also talking about the common flu viruses and stuff. Are uh, what sort of measures do, can people take to sort of just protect their general health? You know, mm -hmm. um, whenever you know to protect from any, any sort of virus like this. Um. Yeah, I just went back to read it before I came here because <laughs> it changes every. Yeah. 
in terms of prevention, it hasn't changed what, what you have for other flu virus with what you have here, which means respiratory etiquette. You know, if you are ill, you have to really be trying to make sure you don't pass on the flu to, to anybody else. Um, the proper washing of hands, right? That, that remains a key message that is across every single uh, situation you read. 90% of infections may be prevented if you actually mm -hmm. um, wash your hands properly. Um, if you know you have been in an area or exposed to somebody who may have it, you need to be able to come to a health facility and say, mm -hmm. this is where I have been. Yeah, that's how you go about doing prevention measures. For example, if you go look at the case, the first case in the US, that person went through all the screens. It, he wasn't really ill. He read it on the news, it kept popping up, and he said, okay, I was there. It seems that I have a symptoms that could lead up to it. Mm -hmm. So he went to the health facility, was swabbed, and then diagnosed, didn't develop any major uh, complication in that regard. So. It's, it's the, the classic things that we know to prevent getting infected and also making sure that we are not passing on the infection to others. Now, the CARFA, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, I think last week it said that the Caribbean is low risk um, for the outbreak. The United States, the U.S. officials say they are low risk, mm -hmm. um, even though they do have cases in, in, in the U.S. Um, they say that they are low risk for the outbreak. Now, when the global attention is on a new disease that has killed whatever percentage, it makes people fearful. How do you put it into context that what this low risk status means um, and that work continues even if we are at a low risk status? Yeah, well, the, the low risk status, I think, came out of a meeting we had um, virtually last week, Wednesday, and that is going may change as we go along. Um, there was another meeting um, virtual yesterday, and there's one through PAHO, which is all the American yeah. region, at uh, midday today, virtual as well. So th that situation may change as we go along. Uh, low risk means the, the probability of it coming here and having the same effect as it is happening in central portions of China is, is, is going to be totally mm -hmm. different in, 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 in that regard. Um, low risk media is not going to be as much a health impact in terms of mortality and morbidity as is happening compared to where it's originating from. But that is going to change. I mean, IHR, WHO may be meeting every 48 hours to determine what the global risk Well, they're meeting becomes. today to decide uh, yeah. if they're so going to de declare yeah. it a global emergency? Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason why, why also the Caribbean was placed like that is because there is no direct connections coming here and, and the amount of persons coming here is not as much as it's in mm -hmm. other places. I mean, you know, airlines have, start, have now started to cancel flights to China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are saying it's not because it, there's an imposed travel ban, but because the affluence of people going to China, I mean, is, is minimal now. So mm -hmm. airlines have said, well, I don't have enough passengers to go, so I'm mm -hmm. just canceling mm -hmm. flights until. Yeah. this situation kind of normalizes itself. Um, so that may change. The low risk is, has to do with the probability of it getting here and the implications it may have after that. So you said very clearly that we, we don't have direct flights mm -hmm. um, to, from China. So it's not that we would have to, to do the, screen, the first screening. Um, we are almost at the point of third screening because they'd, go, they'd get a screening in China a screening in whatever connecting country and then to Belize. What kind of checks, we, we, we hear and see because we have the, the, the US media informing us, what kind of screens are taking place there? But what about Salvador? And what about Panama? And what about um, even people coming through the border crossings uh, in the north and west? Yeah, the one, I think the flights coming through El Salvador, they have, may have three connections before they get here. Okay. I am not so sure about the connection through Panama, but I think the connection is to a European country as well. Mm -hmm. So they have more legs when they come down that route. Mm -hmm. The shortest route is going to be China, LA, mm -hmm. China, Houston, on to Belize. Mm -hmm. Those are the shorter connecting flights. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually a, a 48 hour uh, process before you get here. So that in itself mm -hmm. becomes a barrier because you, it's not like if you have a two-hour flight to get somewhere and mm -hmm. you, 
you know, after 48 hours, you expect if they are going to get ill, that something is starting to come up. But again, those are going to be screened and identified and followed. Mm -hmm. Because the intention is not that they get lost once they get, get to Belize. Mm -hmm. Understand that you have Belizeans also yeah. going mm -hmm. to Japan. Just this week we get asked, is it okay for us to go? I mean, mm -hmm. again, there's no travel ban. It's the usual yeah. precautions that you have to take. Yeah, and are they also sort of monitoring the situation in China itself? Because, I mean, we hear um, they're trying to you know, impose certain quarantines, restricting movement, especially from, let's call it the epicenter mm -hmm. of, the vi of where the virus originated. Um, so, and of course, you know, China is a huge country, over a billion people. So it's not as though it's, it would be impractical, I suppose, to, to, you know, impose an all-out travel ban. But um, do we also take sort of that information into account when we're doing when they're doing screenings and stuff? Yeah, because for example, the ones that we know did arrive were not in the area. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. remember the quarantine in certain in the three cities that initially came yeah. has been there for a week now. So. Um, even the people that are being allowed to travel out, go back to their countries, because they have people from Mexico, and they have been able to travel and no signs or symptoms. Yeah. So, th I mean, that in itself becomes a layer of protection. Now, China is the one who decided to do that, and I guess, I can only guess, that it has to do with the experience they had with SARS. Well, the they were heavily criticized for SARS as well, I, yeah, for but how they handled SARS. How, yeah, but now I think their willingness to do self-quarantine may yeah. be as a result of that, but I think it also has economic implications. I mean, with SARS, the amount of money is lost, and now the amount of money is they are going to start to lose with all fights being canceled there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have 17 airlines that have now said... They're not going to China. Well, they are minimizing. Yeah. But they are flying to Hong Kong, which, I mean, is not that far from China, so yeah. how are you still going to handle that? So I, I think what we need to talk about, because understanding... Um, you know, whether it's low risk uh, at this moment or if it's declared a global emergency today, people want to know that Belize is ready and that we are doing all we can to prevent anyone getting into the country to spread the, the virus, but also at, at this time of the outbreak, to be clear, but also if there is a suspected case that we have a proper protocol, um, isolation area, protective gear, all the things that will be essential to contain the spread of the virus? Well, there's many unknowns, just like with Ebola, uh, which seem to be much more higher mortality, yeah. more easily um, transmittable um, uh, disease. Uh, that in itself allows you to start to prepare for situations like this. You may never be prepared. I mean, if a virus e evolves neighboring Mexico, then the situation is different. What is being done in this case, for example, today we're doing two investigations, rumor investigations of NART, of people saying, okay, I, we think that this person was in China, is ill, maybe they have the coronavirus. And we already had an incident earlier in the, in, in the week in, in Kikakar. Uh, investigation is done and you, you follow the so process. So you, you investigate any report that is made? Yeah, and that's... I mean, unfortunately, that's going to be where it's going to go now because surveillance teams are on the alert for that. That's the only way you're going to be able to find them mm -hmm. if there is any detective work. But the, the intention is once you have a suspect case, for example, the cases in Corozal, the preliminary data I got seem to be people who got the flu here. Mm -hmm. They're still going to be swabbed right? and the necessary precautions in, in that regard. If we feel that that's a suspect case, mm -hmm. right? because then the mild game changes in that regard, then you have to go and do isolation, depending on how ill the, the patient is. Where do you isolate? Do we have a specific will, we, area for isolation? We will have to get an isolation area in where, I mean, if this is in Corozal, it has to, we have to identify an area uh, where, where the person is, is, is isolated um, until you have gotten any kind of clearance. Now we do some testing for viruses here, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so you might be getting the result within 20, 24 hours and then the uh, will go we ahead be able to test for coronavirus? Well, the the, we are able to determine that. If we think that it's a novel coronavirus, that has to go on to CDC. Mm -hmm. I mean, that there's two labs, I think, only that are doing it in the American. So it has to go either to Atlanta or to Canada. Atlanta is, is a quicker connection. And then you, you do your detective work, which means if you have contacts, you'll have to go and map out all the contacts, mm -hmm. right, and ascertain. 
treatment is always going to be the cause because I think the panic here is not so much it's what probability do I have of getting it, what probability do I have of dying from mm -hmm. it. Um, and I think there's been much, much deliberation, but just yesterday in the discussion we had with Central Health Region, the key thing is the treatment, there's none, but you get supportive treatment. When you have the flu, what do you do with the patient? You take care of the you symptoms. Care. Symptoms. If the patient progresses, you treat it progressively. If you require antibiotics because they got another infection or they progress to a respiratory viral pneumonia, um, then you treat it accordingly. I mean, we have our flu cases, influenza cases, that progress, they may have to be intubated, ventilated, hooked up to a ventilator in an ICU mm -hmm. and, and give the supportive treatment as you go along. Um, is this, when you go back to the medical data, it's the same thing that's done in these cases. Of course, people are gonna say, okay, but then you isolate mm -hmm. an ICU, you, you have to find a, a mechanism for yeah. doing that. Um, but it's not, I mean, there's no treatment granted Mm -hmm. Even in China right now, they don't know what they're going to do. I mean, with SARS, what they eventually used was uh, lopinavir, ritonavir medications used for HIV. Mm -hmm. But it may be the same thing here. And until we know, um, that, that's the way it's going to go. So what, what do we know about successful treatment? Um, because let's, let's, let's shift perspective here. We were talking about that this morning. So 170 people have died um, from the uh, over 7,000 cases. Uh, so that means that there are over 7,000 people who contracted or got the virus and I'm assuming are healthier at this point because it's been a while since we've had it. Um, so is there information being shared as to how the people who have not died from the disease have been treated and are those protocols that are going to be implemented here in Belize? Um, yes, actually when we reviewed the preliminary data that was shared with us by, uh, one week ago actually, 70% um, of the patients that had died were people older than 65 mm -hmm. um, who had other chronic mm -hmm. conditions, diabetes, hypertension, mm -hmm. um, COPD, um, it's a heavy smoking mm -hmm. situation in, in, in China. So that in itself is, is follows the pattern of other flu viruses, uh, right? Um, so that, that's something that we are looking at. Who is, what cohort of patients are dying? Um, you are right, it's 20% only that de develop progressively more severe mm -hmm. disease. It doesn't mean that all of them have required to be in an ICU or ventilated, it's just mm -hmm. a more progressive cough and respiratory distress. But 80% of those patients are having just the common flu symptoms. Um, no specific treatment either. Mm. The, the severe cases are being treated as, as far as like we know, how you treat symptomatically. Flu. Now, you know that there is quite a bit of concern um, that because we don't see the type of measures that we see being taken in China, we don't see being taken in the US, People aren't walking around with masks. I know in, in the US, the CDC is trying to look at how to prevent people mm -hmm. from getting masks because it might actually uh, reduce the availability for healthcare workers. Um, you know, we, we don't see that type of urgency that seems to be taking place everywhere else. Why is that? Um, I don't know in, in terms of urgency. I can tell you the work that we are doing at, at health surveillance teams ha has shifted. I mean, I don't think they have been doing anything else from Wednesday of last week to now in terms of just trying to give the information, trying to get the message across. Not specific to coronavirus, and maybe that's perhaps where the message is being lost, in the sense that, okay, the flu ads are on, for example. Mm -hmm. We had the opportunity to give flu shots, uh, vaccination. Um, it does, didn't really happen. Uh, wash your hands. Th those things are implicit. The masks is, is a tricky situation because if you review what happens in China, people routinely there have started using masks from the SARS situation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that they started using more masks now. Mm -hmm. Perhaps our focus now is there and again, but when you review data two, three months ago, the vast amount of people walking in streets had on masks and, and that also has to do with their air quality. Air, air quality. So that, that's one. Two is a mask may not necessarily help a frontline worker. 
If we are saying 90% of infections can be prevented by washing your hands, avoid touching your face, you are a long way in that regard. And it shouldn't really be that we are going to be using masks just because of the coronavirus until we know that something has changed, of course, because you have other flu viruses that we probably are going to be able to get and I don't know if the mask is necessarily going to help. A mask in somebody who's not used to wearing it may actually be a false eye of infection because you have a mask, what, if you analyze what people do is you, have, you tend to hold, try to fix the mask more routinely so the amount of times you may be more. actually touching the mask on your face is going to be increased. Uh, incubating it. <laughs> and this is an incubation mm -hmm. situation in and of itself. Um, so it, it may be a false sense of security that you have. Even okay. the gloves that people have, mm -hmm. um, right? Uh, so again, it has to do with proper, how many times do you touch your face? How yeah. many times do you go from your phone to your face? Those kinds of things. So the mechanisms are in place. I, I think our role has got to be to provide adequate information, yeah. timely information, um, and we need to be getting information from the sources. Yeah. I mean, if we are getting information from everybody else. And, and I think the, the other thing that we have noted, particularly yesterday on, on, on one of our media interactions, is that the sense is that we are perhaps downplaying it, but I don't know how much of our message is also being downplayed when we started talking about the flu in November, December of last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we still have 20,000 vaccines that were not People used, didn't take their flu shot. Even healthcare workers, some, some entities have 10% uptake. So how does, I mean, if you take the flu shot now, it, it doesn't necessarily stop you from getting the, the new coronavirus. The other viruses. Yeah. And it doesn't, again, the other thing with the flu shot, it doesn't mean you're not going to get the flu. Mm -hmm. Because people say, oh, I get it, uh, I, I get, get it, sick. and I still get sick. Or I get it and then I feel ill mm -hmm. for the next four or five days because you get the, a milder form of the flu. Um, but the reason why the flu shot is because it tr tries to boost up your immunity so that you don't get more aggressive cases, mm -hmm. so that you don't wind up so being in an ICU. you don't have that then. knockout flu that yes. puts you in the hospital. Yeah. Now, if I am coming into the country tomorrow, what am I going to meet at the airport? Tell me, give me a sense of security that the Ministry of Health at PGIA, or even with the cruise ships coming in, are doing due diligence to ensure that um, we, will, we are doing all we can to not have this virus enter the country. What's different at our entry points? The cruise ship is perhaps a quicker yeah. question because they have their own doctors, they have their own quarantine They have room. to submit information they before. They have the manifest, yeah. right? So that's submitted before, and you have public health inspectors going on board to determine who yeah. is allowed to come on or off. And then the crew, one cruise line has decided to take their own measures a notch further, that's their own internal, in terms of who they will allow to board their ship and who won't. Um, that, that's an, an internal decision they have taken. In the airport, it, doesn't, it would not require, it's not going to mean that everybody is going to be screened. So I'm not going to have my temperature checked when I come into the airport. We'll go to the temperature check right now. But the manifest that we have requested from all airlines now is, the, because we normally get a manifest, mm -hmm. but we are asking for an extra column in terms of where they are originating, because mm -hmm. I don't want them to just say they are coming from Dallas to here. Where was your place of origin? If that is from the affected area, then there's an extra screening process that is going to happen mm -hmm. in terms of we interacting with you, doing your initial detective work, um, and then determining how much of a risk you are. Mm -hmm. Based on that, then you take the necessary precautions. If there's a suspect case and stuff, then there's processes that will be done in terms of isolation, triaging that patient to a facility here, and then determining what happens. Have we identified solving. isolation areas? Even at the, the public hospital here? We, would, we are going to select one facility in Belize City only where those patients will be channeled. Mm -hmm. um, we did get the question of what happens if they get progressively ill, then we'll have to follow the same route. I mean, we only have one um, intensive care unit and that's part of what you're gonna have to determine how that's gonna go in, in, in that regard. Now remember, mm -hmm. again, you have other coronaviruses circulating in Belize, so uh, again, unless it's changing drastically and dramatically in terms of infectivity and infectiousness, then 
the bowel can change is complete. What happens if the WHO declares today a, a global health emergency? That means all public health surveillance efforts across the globe change. I mean, more restrictions are going to be placed. Um, travel bans may, countries may decide to do that on their own, although that's not routinely recommended. Mm -hmm. International regulations from 2005 will tell you that's not routinely recommended. Even though people are saying, oh, we should do that because we don't have the capacity to deal with these cases, mm -hmm. but then what about all the other countries in the region? You know? And we, it's not that we take directions from WHO. We have to zone it in and determine what's that, what that will mean for us. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is your recommendation to Belizeans today? People who are watching and are concerned, what would you tell them about what they can do to prevent and also what type of information they should be paying attention to? Well, I, I think even when we read headlines from abroad, we need to be able to read the entire story. Because if you read the headline only, it's going to be... It's not the whole story. Yeah, that's one. Two, we are going to try to provide updates on a routine basis, at least once a day, mm -hmm. uh, uh, hopefully by 2 p.m. every day, because it's changing. Mm -hmm. So even WHO, as I said, we're meeting with Pahu twice today. If there's anything that changed in terms of measures, we plan to do that every day weekends included, even on our social media platforms. Um, and three is, this, the flu vaccine is still available. If people want to come, although we are in the middle of the season, people can still have access to that. But the other measures remain. I mean, the washing of hands, the proper respiratory, because even if it would get here. Coughing in your elbow. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Instead of your hands if or you are, a rug. If you're getting progressively, if you have the flu, more than two or three days, can be self-medicating, you need to go to your doctor. Yeah. Um, those things will Don't remain Don't go to work if you're sick. Don't go to work if you're sick. Uh, I mean, it's going to be understood. Um, we might have our own viruses here as well, uh, you know, and because the reason always keeps coming back, why China? Well, the density of the population and their closeness to live, um, live animals. That is perhaps the reason why they are exporting more um, viruses. And, and I'll use one more example in terms of viruses and, and Belize, because the notion is that we are very much different in that regard, and mm -hmm. we are. In the HIV study we did in 2012, for example, talking about a virus, our virus in Belize, that was MAP, is very different from the viruses in every other Mesoamerican country. Mm. Our one is the only one that is very different, it's very colorful, if you will, it doesn't match anyone from Mexico, Guatemala, all the way down to hmm. Colombia. And we have that data that's, that has been published. So viruses mutate. Our one so what you're saying is way. we have the capacity to, uh, to detect Everybody. new strains in Belize yeah. as well. Everybody, but uh, it's perhaps not going to have an impact yeah. as this yeah. one is having yeah. simply because of the population density. Hmm. Um, so we have to be on the lookout. We have to be on the alert. Go to the adequate channels. And when anything changes in terms of dynamics, we'll be communicating there. You said that you have two investigations to do today. How concerned should we be about that? And also, start with that, yeah. The preliminary data doesn't seem to indicate there would be coronavirus cases, but we have to do our due diligence in ensuring that we are able to correctly say these are not cases. One in Corozal and the second? Both are in Corozal. Both be. are in Corozal. And um, what's your advice to people if they suspect that they or somebody else may or may not have come in contact with the virus? They will have to go to their closest cell facility and they will be properly sc screened in terms of doing epidemiological data review and assess your risk. And where do you make a report if it's somebody else? Uh, same health facility. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in and having this conversation with us. I think there's a lot of information that we needed to know and understand, and uh, we look forward to the next update as well. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Dara Robinson to talk about fundraising efforts for his feeding program. So stay tuned.